everyone. I'm going to tell you how to use Photopea to edit images so that you can add them to your website. So whatever image you have, whether you took it with your phone, if you already have it on an account and you just need to make changes, as long as it's a JPEG, PNG, PSD, which would be a Photoshop document, you can go to File and Open. From there, go ahead and select your image. So I'll show two. This is a picture I took of the moon, and I think it doesn't need much editing, but I'll show you kind of what you can do with it. I do think it needs to be cropped, so that's this tool one, two, three, four, five. So you can always select if you need to get off of a crop, and then down here you can go crop. And you can just drag, select. And if you decide you want to crop a little closer, you can shrink in. Notice I'm grabbing the boxes. You don't have to necessarily, but if you don't, get that rotated part. So if you just want it to go straight up and down, you want to grab the boxes. Let's say that's about right. I can double click on it. And now my image is cropped. If I wanted to add words to it, if we go down this list, you'll notice there's a T, it's a type tool, shortcut tool, shortcut tool T. Anytime you roll over these, you'll get what's called a tool tip. They tell you what the tool is called and then what the shortcut key is for it. So you can click and it will load. And I could go ahead and type out something like moon, which I think you saw in that preview. And you can't see it at all. And there's a couple reasons for that. So I want to drag my cursor over it and highlight the whole thing. If I want to zoom in more, I can go ahead and click that icon. I could also just click here to turn on and off the background. That's our visibility. So this might be a little easier for me to select it this way. I have to have the type tool on drag select over the words once I get that icon. Hmm. Okay, let me change it first and then I'll go back to it. If you're using Photoshop, usually it holds the highlight, but you can go here to this size to change the size. You can manually type it in too. So if I decided it needed to be larger than that, like 400 pixels, I could do that as well. That's probably too large, but we'll go to it. And then I can also change the color. Once again, make sure it's highlighted and I can click on the color over here. Let's say I want it white. And then I want to go to the font. Let's say I like this one better. I can click through and change those. And at this point, if I decided I needed to move it around, reorder it, I could. If I needed to shrink it, once again, I have that drag select tool. I can go in here and make it smaller. I'd say probably 200 would be a much more reasonable size. And I could change the color in case I said, well, you know, that's taking way too much attention. It's too bright. I could also come to here and edit this image. So if I click on background, I'll be able to ed edit this moon again. I can go to image adjustments and I might go to brightness contrast maybe brighten it up a hair so that at least I have a little more of a white I can increase the contrast which will make the differences between white and black higher I can also decrease the contrast if I wanted to kind of see more gray details in this image and so sometimes if you look like you're losing detail in the image I decrease the contrast if I, I feel like like when I take a picture of my cat who's black and tan and I want to be able to see it a little better, I'll decrease the contrast. Whereas if I'm losing details because it looks washed out, I'll increase the contrast. I can also go to image size to make this image the correct size to put on my web page. So right now it's really big. It's 2000 some pixels. It's going to rescale together because this link icon is darker. If I wanted just to change 
the width and not the height, which normally stretches the image, so I wouldn't recommend it unless you really have a reason for it. You can unclick that. So I know that on my Weebly page, I'm looking at about a 400 to 600. And if nothing else, it's good to resize your images because they'll load quicker, but also because it makes them harder to take because they won't have as much detail if, so, if someone tries to upscale it or print it without your permission they're going to get a really grainy, yucky copy. So I normally scale down my work on my website so it's not as easy for people to take. And then if I wanna see it, I can go to view, pixel to pixel, that'll show it at full size. It's still big enough for a website. If I wanted, I could also zoom in, zoom out, or I could fit to area. Now, just a couple other fun ones I wouldn't use necessarily on this but I could go to image and go to adjustments and there's hue saturation. And this will increase or decrease the hue of it. So notice my black has a little bit of color. I can change that in here. I could hit colorize and that'll put a color filter over the whole image, which is a little hard to see on white. You can also increase the saturation and see now you can see it. So I could change the hue of it. So if I wanted this to be like a red or a purple moon, I could. I can increase the lightness and darkness. This kind of seems like brightness contrast, but all it does is it kind of puts a wash filter over the whole thing. So I really would recommend not using this filter over kind of that brightness and contrast filter if you can help it. But sometimes you get good results. And if I wanted to even play with this color more, I could go to Image, Adjustments, Color Balance. And here's where I really get more control over if I want a little more, you know, more red in that, less red. And I can adjust just all of those color details. And I can adjust it for the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. So you can affect the darkest parts of the image, the mid parts of the image, or the brightest parts of the image. And sometimes it's interesting to just kind of play around with that. Now, let's say you have something that's a little more complicated. Here's a picture of my daughter's clay cats. Yay. So we'd probably start the same way. We, we would crop them. But you can notice one, the image is a little blurry. I'll see if I can get a little more crispness out of that. And the other thing is that this cat got a little smushed, a little skewed. So I can go to edit, transform, and I could do a scale if I wanted the whole thing to be larger or smaller, but I could also do distort. And what this lets me do is it lets me pick just one corner of it and move each individual corner. So if I wanted this cat to just get a little bigger, I can move each individual corner now I find that if I want it to go up and over, I have to do that as two steps. So I would go like down and I go over. And now it looks a little more true to life. And especially if you're holding your camera at an angle, you'll get some of these distortions. So this is a really good way to fix that. If you took a picture of something you had framed and it's not even, this is a good way to fix that as well. From there, you can click on here or just double click. It should accept the changes. And after this, just once again to publish any of these, you would go to File. If you know you want to edit it more, this only has one layer, so maybe I wouldn't. But on that other picture where I had a couple layers, I might save it as a PSD, which is a Photoshop document. That will keep native layers. If I just want to put it on my website, I would either export it as a PNG if it has transparencies, or more commonly, I'll just export it as a JPEG and it's going to default to web, so it's got that 70% quality. In this case, it won't hurt to bump it up to 100. You can attach metadata if you know that it came with it. If you don't know what metadata is, we'll get to that later. And then you would just hit save, and it'll ask where it wants you to save it to. So I could call this Kids Cats.
And now I have my image saved, and that's what I can use to upload to my website. 